Hey everybody, it's Brandon again. Hope you're all having a good day. Today I want to do, I just give you guys a quick look at a little machine I've been using for the last uh, two weeks here. It is the Intel Nook. You're supposed to say Nook. I like to say Nook. Uh, it's the Nook 11. This is the uh, Celeron edition of this thing. Um, uh, I don't see the model number on here, but I'll put that in the video description. But um, yeah, this thing... You can get it at a B and H photo with uh, no RAM or no memory for one hundred and sixty dollars. I got this one on Amazon for two hundred and forty. I think I'll put a link in the description so you can check that out. It's uh, it came with eight gigs of RAM, two hundred fifty six gig hard drive, and a Windows eleven Pro license. So I thought it was a decent deal. I got this thing to replace that uh, little B Link computer I got a few months ago that died on me right away. I. Uh, I'm hoping to see if an Intel brand one lasts a little bit longer than a B-Link. I think it will. Um, the reviews are pretty good on it. And in my testing in the first few weeks, it's been doing pretty good. So what I'm going to do here in this video is I'm just going to show you around the device. We're going to open it up, look inside, see what it came with. And then I'm going to uh, fire, fire the thing up and show you a couple other things and uh, give you my thoughts on it. So let's get going. All right, guys. So here is the front of the device itself. Pretty basic. Of course, you got your Celeron sticker on top. Uh, you got your power button, two USB 3 ports. You got a pin port, and it comes with a rubber gasket thing where you can cover that up. And you got your microphone and headphone jacks. Uh, I kind of prefer to have the unified single jack, but that's not too big of a deal. Um, on the side somewhere, you got your lock, Kensington lock thing. On the back, we have a display port, gigabit ethernet, a couple of uh, regular USB ports, a couple more USB 3 ports, your HDMI, your uh, power port, and um, I don't know, maybe that's for resetting the thing. Bottom, nothing special. You can uh, mount this thing pretty easily. You got your four screws to open it up. You got your little rubber footies on that thing, and uh, let's go ahead and open it up and see what the inside looks like. All right, guys, so here's the inside of the machine. Uh, I just went ahead and I pulled out the RAM and the um, the SSD just so we could take a cleaner look at it. But it's really simple inside, really easy to work with. You see here you have two slots for DDR4 RAM. And over there is you got your NVMe slot so you can put in your hard drive. I think it supports up to two terabytes of hard drive and up to 32 gigs of RAM. And, um, but other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it in here. This thing is really basic inside, but just really clean and really easy to get around and work with. Really easy to upgrade if you need to. And, uh, there's just four screws on the bottom. You pop the bottom plate off and that's what you get. And just real quick here, here it is how to ride from Amazon. Uh, this is the, uh, SSD that they sent with me. The, um, it's a Lexar brand uh 200 i guess 256 gigs and there's the uh memory module it's kingston ram uh that's a uh, ddr4 3200 eight gigs of ram right there so the uh the model that i purchased on amazon this is what it came pre-configured with all right everybody we're here uh logged into the system itself as you can see i'm running chrome os flex on this thing but as i said it came with windows 11 pro and um, I also tried Fedora Linux on it right off the bat. Both of them actually worked pretty good. The Linux is a little faster than the Windows, but the Windows wasn't unbearable. It was actually usable. So here I am in the uh, system diagnostics screen of Chrome OS. As you see, I'm on Chrome OS 113, and uh, we are running an Intel Celeron N5105. That's what we got in here. It's a four core CPU. I don't think there's any hyper threading or anything. And you can see we have our eight gigs of RAM. Uh, Five gigs available on a basically cold boot here. So I'm going to close that out and show you what I got on the browser benchmark score. 73.7. Now, obviously, that's nothing to write home to your mom about. And um, my iPad here does better than that. But uh, the iPad also costs like three times more. So there's, there's that. So, yeah, it's not a speed demon, but it actually can do some decent things. Um, I mentioned another video on my channel here. Linux apps work pretty good. I got uh, Morrowind working on there. I did GIMP for image editing. Uh, Inkscape runs pretty smoothly on this. I mean, Inkscape works better on this thing than it does on my Mac, sadly, which is an M1. 
but uh, that's more of an Inkscape problem than anything else. For web apps and games, things uh, actually work pretty good. Let me see if I have Mike Colony 2 on here so I can show you some 3D stuff. This is a game I developed, by the way. So that's why I'm partial to it. And uh, don't judge me for the loading time on it. It's it's like that on a fast machine, too. It's something I got to work with. So if we uh, go ahead and I have a little colony right there. Load that thing up. And it is definitely not as uh, snappy as it would be on a high-end machine. But it, once you get in it, it actually runs pretty good on this thing. And if it looks choppy, it's probably because of the uh, video recording software here. It actually... In um, the actual game, it runs pretty good. So for web games, it's going to do all right. There are uh, obviously Linux applications and games you can install on this, but let's be real. You're not going to be doing gaming on this type of machine. But for basic tasks, for a um, Chrome OS device or a Linux device or even a Windows device, it's, uh, it's hard to go wrong with this little machine. As I said, I did try doing my work on this thing full time. Um, I failed, but it wasn't because of the device. It was more because of the file management or the lack thereof in Chrome OS. Uh, had I put Linux on this thing, I could probably use it indefinitely to do all my work on. So that's a good testament to this thing. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, shut it down and give you my final thoughts on this thing before we uh, sign off here. So anyway, that's my uh, quick little overview of this thing. Um, as I said, for the first couple weeks I've been using it, it's been pretty good. Uh, for my software development work, I probably could use this thing as my only workstation unless I needed to do uh, a lot of video editing, which if you watch my channel, I don't do a lot of editing. <laughs> but uh, other than that, it could do most things. It's not going to play games. I did have a video on my channel where I played Morrowind on this thing. Old game, but it worked pretty good. Um... So yeah, there it is. I'll just leave a description or I'll leave a link to it in the uh, description if you want to look at it and see reviews, see what other people think about it. Uh, to me, I think it's better than the little B-Link computer I had. Costs a little more than the B-Link, but uh, the B-Link also died within a couple months. So I'm hoping this thing lasts a little longer. Believe me, if it dies, I'll be letting you guys know. But um, so far, so good. I like it. Good choice for some of you guys looking for a little mini computer. It runs, it comes with Windows 11, runs good on Linux, uh, runs great on Chrome OS Flex. And so there it is. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a good day. Take care. Stay out of trouble. Goodbye now.